Hello and welcome to the AV Forum's Top 10 4Ks and Blu-rays podcast for February 2024. Tonight I'm joined by Simon Crust. Yes, you are. And Mark Costello. No, you're not. <laughs> Our February 4K and Blu-ray podcast continues the format. Mm. We're going to do a top 10 list of recommended discs for February. It's been a bumper month of some Bonza. titles. Yeah. Bonza. It's been a it's been a good good february um and then we're going to take a deep dive into our single topic controversial one it's got ever more controversial by the day particularly with cameron's looming looming um we're looking at the shifting sands of film restorations both in terms of video and audio and where the line is between restoration and revisionism spoilers um, it's over there somewhere yeah it really is it's, it's somewhere here in these films that we're going to be talking about but first competition that one, that one good that one good that one not so good oh nice can you can you see them all you can, you can <laughs> i feel sorry for the listeners i'm yeah. like moving around a screen they can't even see um current competitions you can win a copy of uh, peeping tom on 4k ultra hd and nine competitions from mark's extended top 10 blu-rays for february including his number one choice inside from second sight and uh, blu-ray box set and his pick of the month river from third window films uh, previous winners anthony 16v won a panasonic lumex s58 from mpb worth nearly two thousand pounds now nice. featured in uh, las vegas wow i mean wasn't it that's what they what? filmed the uh, Las Vegas stuff, uh, CEX, wasn't it? Isn't Did that they? the camera they used? Oh my god, oh. CES, yes. not yes. CEX. That's, that's <laughs> yeah. a different chain of shop. <laughs> yeah, that's where you can sell it for fifteen hundred. <laughs> <laughs> LT won an Anthem MRX five forty receiver worth over fifteen hundred, and Ooh, new star excellent. supporter. Ella's won Second Sight's lavish high tension 4K limited edition box set, and Ooh. new supporter I Confess I'm a Geek won Second Sight's lavish Mean Street 4K Good work. limited edition. Even box better. Set. I mean, they're they're pretty good sets. New patrons, thank you to Ellery Fiddler and John Richard Clements, and bought us a coffee at Chojin and Jimenez. Thank you very much. Thank you. And straight into our top 10, our best discs of February 24. First couple are Blu-rays from Mark's top 10 list. Uh, his first choice is his third choice, his pick of the month, though, River. Oh, see, the numbers are just confusing you, yeah, they are. honestly. Yeah, I know, I know. River is a beautiful, fun little time travel farce. Uh, from Junta Yamaguchi, Yamaguchi I, I do apologise, uh, the director who also did the equally charming and equally fabulous Beyond the Infinite Two Minutes. This plays out uh, as, as just one of the most charming little gentle comedies about <laughs> and I, I can't believe I'm using this phrase the banal realities of time travel uh, it, it, it's there's a little inn by a beautiful picturesque lake high in the mountains in one of Japan's rural areas and everyone is caught in a two minute time loop but unlike so many other films they all remember each loop and they are reset at the end of each two minutes physically. Uh, so it becomes a race to try and explore how do they get out of it if they only have two minutes to do anything. But it's so much more because there, there's a couple who are trying to have a first date. And of course, the first few times they get it wrong and then they get it right. Very Groundhog Day. There's an author who starts worrying about his deadline and then realizes well i don't have a deadline anymore so he's <laughs> all over the shop and there is someone who gets caught in the loop and can't get shampoo out of their hair you know <laughs> it's just a beautiful charming little film that has real fun with this two minute time loop uh notion it does go a little bit bill and ted at the end as they try and get out of it but by that point i was completely hooked and sold on it it's a beautiful charming little film get the disc it, it's a great disc from third window with an hour long making of and a good nearly 20 minute interview with the director as well so yeah brilliant film very nice and that was your pick of the month but pick your the number month. one choice just to confuse the numbers was um inside from second well, night yes so the uh the, the new french extremity 
it's not a genre known for its delicacy, shall we say? <laughs> but in but inside is even even within when you've got the likes of Frontiers uh, and Martyrs, inside is still probably the film to make you wince. Ostensibly, oh. uh, yeah, it's that film. Oh yeah, I've got it now. Yeah, now we go. Uh, a a woman. <laughs> Uh, is alone in her house the night before she is due to give birth. Yeah. The knock at the door, it is another mysterious woman who decides she wants to help herself to the contents of the homeowner's uterus. Uh, and let's just say all manner of icky, bloody, awful, nasty violence ensues. It is strong stuff, but... It's just so beautifully done. Uh, Beatrice Dahl, you know, Betty Blue, for everyone who was a, a student in the late 80s and early 90s, had her on, on, on your bedroom wall in that infamous Betty Blue poster. She is a nut job in this, and she is amazing. She's <laughs> a nut job in that. Uh, <laughs> well, that, that is true. That is true. Uh, and, yeah, it's just for, for horror fans, this is a film you have to see. And Second Sight have done their usual bang up job with it it's a shame on the transfer a lot of people myself included wondered why this didn't get a 4k release when the likes of uh hot tension did but this had a very strange source it was uh, a hybrid 35 millimeter film uh 1080p hd digital video source so maybe that's why they decided they couldn't justify a 4k release but the transfer looks good the extras are amazing and it's another one of second sight's beautiful packages so yeah get on it Nice. And we've got competitions for those two as well. So get on and enter them. Uh, our number eight is a bit of a fudge. It's uh, the Marvels in 4K, but the disc has not landed yet. No one's seen it either. Uh, I have. Oh, I, dear. But I, I watched out. it. Yeah. And Mark saw it at the cinema and yeah. enjoyed it. Yes. And official I saw... AVF review, seven out of 10. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He seven is going to say, he literally said that to me after many. I. After I um, complained, slagged that... it to all hell. So, so I watched it in uh, 4K. It, I mean, it goes down to the other podcast theme. I mean, I watched it in 4K Dolby Vision, uh, IMAX enhanced with Atmos, and um, and it was still no good. It, yeah, I, I mean, I, it almost makes me wonder what what I'm going to do when the disc does arrive. Um, but Give it me. Yeah. <laughs> You know what? I found it. Uh, it reminded me a little bit of the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special. Um, it was watchable. But with less Kevin Bacon. It was watchable, but none of us, the whole family watched it. None of us would have cared if we hadn't had it. Utterly inconsequential and very, very familiar in terms of the the sort of uh, multiverse hopping notions of that have been covered in spider-man and dr strange better than this uh it had a couple of fun moments it did have uh a couple of fun sequences uh and it was having a lot of fun particularly samuel jackson he was having a blast in a completely different role than anyone's ever seen him before in in the mcu it's very odd re-watching the marvel universe with your kids um, and working your way through and getting to Winter Soldier and then taking a pause to watch The Marvels. Very tonally oh, odd. Yeah. <laughs> Going it from... could have been worse. You could have watched Secret Invasion. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. The kids did go, what's Secret Invasion there? The invasion there, advertising. Yeah, don't let's not talk about that. Um, anyway, it gets an entry. Uh, it did look good. It looked it looked suitably film like. It certainly didn't look like a Christmas special, um, but uh, but yeah, but yeah. And yet um, you still chose to put it above uh, Inside and River, Kaz. I know it was mostly Shocker. to give you a break from having to speak through four reviews in a row. I had to put it there because the next two are yours as well. Alligator in four K from One Hundred and One Films. Yes. Uh, so technically, yes, this is a twin film set. The first Alligator in 4K, the second film Alligator to the Mutation in... It's just dreary, an extra. Dreary old 1080p SDR. Uh, however, 
Alligator, the first film, is a creature feature classic uh, from the pen of John Sayles, who, let's be honest, we'll be coming to in a little bit, Kaz, yeah. won't we? <laughs> yes, but we will. more importantly for genre fans, the writer of Piranha and The Howling for Joe Dante. Alligator is brilliant. It is exactly as you expect it to be. It's the urban legend brought to life. Baby alligator flushed down the toilet, grows to immense size after feeding on dead carcasses that have been used for growth hormone experiments by evil big farmer. Uh, it's fun. Robert Forster is quality in the lead role. He's a grizzled cop and he's playing it like he's in a grizzled cop procedural but John Sales brings a ton of snide and smart little nods and winks to it. Bit of satire, bit of satire here, a bit of outright humor there. It's just a really fun first film. Second film is a big pile of old alligator poop. So, yes, uh, I wouldn't bother <laughs> watching that. Uh, but what 101 Films have done is basically take both films their u.s shout factory releases and smush them together into a single uh double amore release the 4k transfer is amazing it really is brilliant looks so good detail grain the hdr is a bit hot but who cares it looks absolutely stunning and even the second film looks pretty good for 1080p uh, a load of great extras the best one is breaking bad's brian cranston <laughs> was a production assistant on Alligator. And he <laughs> he has a hoot telling us all about how he was T-boy on this crazy film that shot sometime in Los Angeles in 1980. It's a brilliant watch. Uh, he loves the film and he's really humble about it. But all the extras are really good. So yeah, it's a, for me, frankly, it's a great set. The only reason it scored so low as it did is because it had the bloody second film in it. Uh, well, it's down for extras. Excellent. They, they should have just called it Alligator 4K, and Alligator 2 could have been an extra. And then yeah. there would have been none of this. In fact, you'd have scored it higher, higher for extras, because Possibly. what an amazing extra to stick another movie on there. Possibly. You'd have given it like tens across the board. It, Arrow it, would have uh, done that. 11 and a half out of 10. Oh, hang yeah, on. Arrow, who just released all, all the Child's Play and all the uh, Hellraiser films. Yeah, they wouldn't do this. They'd be trying to find the, the Asylum Alligator versus Robo Dino Croc to <laughs> shove it there if it was Arrow. I haven't seen oh. Alligator for since I saw it on video 100 years ago. It's, it's just as good as you remember it, Si. It's brilliant. <laughs> I've, ne I've never seen it, but it's by the direct writer-director of Lone Star, which I did review this month. It's further down the list. And I was like, mm. i got to see Alligator now. <laughs> Um, you, you do. You you also reviewed our number six entry, Nightmares in a Damaged Brain, from Severin, yeah. which is uh, part of their first two releases yeah, on so, 4K so, in this country. Yeah, so Severin are one of the kings of US boutiques. They've released a number of regular tenants, people who is here, but I believe, I may be wrong, but I believe that their first two releases are Nightmares in a Damaged Brain uh, and Bad Biology. Uh, the, the, the god awful <laughs> Frank Head and Lotter <laughs> film, Bad Biology. Oh my God, I've um, given you PTSD by even making you, you recall you this. Have. But anyway, but anyway, we're here to talk about Nightmares in a Damaged Brain. So, yes, it is one of the infamous video nasties, and it is to this date, and hopefully will remain, the only video nasty that got its distributor sent to actual prison. Uh, now, <laughs> Obviously, before you start going, oh, my word, what is this hideous genre masterpiece? Said distributor released the BBFC approved version theatrically, but then decided to release an uncut version on VHS. However, that, that was a regulation that well, of course, it wasn't regulation, but no one noticed. No one noticed at all. Until said distributor started taking a leaf out of William Castle's book and started to sell this VHS with such bad taste gimmicks as a guess the weight of the titular brain in the jar contests, which he <laughs> ran in video shops and in the back of all manner of magazines. So it's hilarious. However, the film itself is, is unlike anything that I've just said would prepare you for. It's actually a strangely psychological and serious um, I would barely call it a slasher film but that's in essence what it is 
Uh, it's very, very Gorno. It's very, very 42nd Street uh, grindhouse. But it is, in essence, based on the MK Ultra Human Experimentation Program of the States in the, 60, in the 50s and 60s, I think. This is about drugs controlling human behavior. It's got some Tom Savini brilliant makeup effects. Although, interesting enough, if you listen to Tom Savini on the disc, he denies all knowledge of it. <laughs> and yet his name is there in the credits. It's brilliant. That's another extra to watch. Uh, it's actually a really good little slasher that's that has does have delusions of grandeur. It wants to be more than just blood and guts. And it actually succeeds. It, it's quite a nifty little slasher for fans of the genre. So, yeah, the the release, though, the transfer is pretty ropey. 88 Films released this as part of their Slashers collection back in 2015. And it looked, oh, my word, it looked like it had been dragged through a ditch backwards. This looks like it's been dragged through a ditch forwards, but <laughs> it is still an improvement over that disc. It's calmed the awful, insane brightness down. But honestly, you take one look at it, it was a 35 millimeter negative. It looks like it was shot on eight millimeter, honestly. Uh, but that's kind of the, the aesthetic. So it, it's not a looker, but the extras are really, really good. There's a feature length documentary on the uh, distributor, David Hamilton Grant, and his court case and going to prison that's that's really fascinating talk about a, uh, a point in time and capturing that feel of the video nasties era but there's a load of other good stuff on there there's an hour-long interview with the directors there's, there's, there's lots of really good stuff on there so if you are a fan of 80 slashes this is a package for you just to be warned that it looks a bit crap no nope. scratch that it looks a lot crap but it kind of adds <laughs> to it but it was meant to yeah. So yeah. Oh, so yeah. This uh, is feeding into our theme of the. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Ever the pro. Uh, um, number five, Lone Star. Uh, alligators. John Sales in, in, with a very different hat on, um, a Western hat on, cowboy hat, and uh, Chris Creeper, small town sheriff, finds some dead bones and starts to wonder whether his much revered former sheriff late father um played in flashback by matthew matthew mcconaughey was really actually all that great um particularly in his confrontations with that guy's former sheriff uh played by chris christopherson absolutely scene stealing uh it's a lovely little neo anti-western um very very nicely structured very nice mystery uh done justice by criterion i don't think i've seen this since dvd <laughs> So Criterion give it a native 4K res restoration from the, the OCN, uh, Dolby Vision HDR. It, it looks stunning. It's textured, filmic, looks lovely. Uh, great audio track, original audio to boot. Um, it's a nice package. I think it's one of my favorite releases from them in a while. Actually, I, I scratched that since their UK division of 4K releases started. We had Pinocchio, we had... Lone Star, there have been a few nice choices to their 4K, not just US stuff that we already have, like Thelma and Louise, you know, so um, so very nice. Mm, and I'm having that, I love Lone Star, it's a great film. It is, it's a great film, isn't it? Yeah, isn't it? yeah, yeah. Very, very surprising uh, little film. Um, yeah. Very nice. Uh, size on duty for Invasion of the Body Statues 4K from, from Arrow. Tell I us. did. Hello. I did. What a great film. Superb. Remake of the 1950s Invasion of the Body Snatchers, based off the book, The Body Snatchers. Um, updating the uh, the communist paranoia to uh, nihilistic noir uh, with one of the great all-time endings of any film ever. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just a beautifully cynical film there he is look yeah that's that's uncanny <laughs> <laughs> for those of you watch, I, 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 for those I was, of you I was watching just replaced then i was just replaced then <laughs> <laughs> um yeah the uh, and, and the video transfer is magnificent uh really really nicely done um beautifully filmic wonderfully detailed superb coloring um yeah great uh, soundtrack 5.1 uh, included a 2.0 on there as well. Either track suits the film. They both suit it really well. Good bass, good good separation. Um, boatload of extras. What's not to love? You know, it's a fantastic little set. God, what a month In my to watch pile, 
as we speak. Yeah. I mean, it's what a month of releases. I mean, there's no, you know, vying for position it is when it comes to our our discs. Uh, and you did the Conan set, Mark. I, I actually have uh, the Conan I... set, but I haven't had a reason to open it since you did the review because <laughs> there's just so uh, many things to review. But my God, it looks lovely and it sounds lovely. Yeah, it, it, it is. So Conan the Barbarian, the first one. Yeah, basically it's, it's, it's no Conan, no Game of Thrones. This is where it started. The whole adult fantasy genre. Uh, the film is amazing. I'd argue that it is John Milius and Oliver Stone's hacked script that are more responsible for its longevity as opposed to a certain Mr. Schwarzenegger. Although it's probably neck and neck in all honesty. It's just a, a superbly brutal and effective fantasy film that doesn't feel like a fantasy film. It largely ignores all the fantastical elements. Well, you know, apart from that giant snake and you know, apart from James Earl Jones turning into a snake. And you know, apart from all those, you know, those swords. Ghosts, but apart from all that, <laughs> there's very little fantasy stuff in it. Uh, it's a superb film. However, it's an Arrow 4K release. So therefore, you know what that means? Oh, there's always some controversy that comes with it. Uh, on the whole, for 99.9% .9 of this release, it is absolutely beautiful. Uh, Milius uses a lot of optical transition, so unfortunately it means there is a bit up and down in terms of the grain structures and fine detail. Obviously it thickens when it comes onto these optical fades because in essence you're sticking two strips of the camera negative over each other, in essence. Uh, uh, however, Arrow haven't muddled with those. They've left them exactly as they should be. And the first gen footage is stunning. It has been pointed out that there is one potential error in this uh, to do with the color grade that potentially looks like Arrow pushed the button on the color grade a few seconds, either too early or too late. There's a hard cut where the color literally just changes from a sort of uh, slightly warmer, ready grade to a slight cooler more more bluey grade i didn't pick this up at all when i first watched it when it was pointed out i can see it i would argue that for 99 percent of people you ain't gonna notice it and it's not a, not a deal why, breaker why did you tell me that why would you tell me well because it is my due as the professional reviewer account. oh my god uh, i don't so, i don't want to so know it, i'm not gonna notice uh, no 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 but we have to because for all we know mm. arrow might turn around and issue a replacement we don't know if they do it'll be fun for all those uk people oh, trying God, to get go with it yeah <laughs> but, but, but the re the reality of, the reality of it is and i just want to say this now for me i didn't even notice it first time around i doubt anyone else will so yeah. even if they didn't replace this i for one i'm not going to lose one jot of sleep over it yeah okay uh and, and, and extras are absolutely fantastic some new stuff as well as all the old uh, yeah, it's just a great, great pack and picked up with the Conan Chronicles that, that throws the destroyer in. It's 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 the alligator syndrome all over again. <laughs> uh, but uh, but for this first film, I think it's a great release, an absolute great release of a, of a classic 80s film. And at least Arrow, you can get them separately, can't you? You don't have to buy the yeah, double pack. You can, but yeah, if you but buy I... the double pack, you get like art cards. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> but, but, but apparently they're struggling to fulfill uh orders over there so i know that amazon us have really struggled getting orders out apparently some of them are sold out on the arrow us site so yeah it looks like this is this has gone gangbusters yeah i'm selling my copy well, on we ebay know, for a grand well well <laughs> well well the thing i the thing i will say is we know it's arrow so we know there'll be a standard edition coming along at some point so yeah. Don't don't go to eBay and pay funny money for that. Just hold your horses. Or, or do if you see my <laughs> <laughs> Parts of Glory 4K from Eureka. Um, this this looks spectacular. Oh mate, yeah, yeah. Um, he's, do that's... he's done well with war movies, hasn't he, Kubrick? He has very he's well. Got a yes. Very diverse, but excellent war movies. Absolutely, yeah. This this was his his first one, only his second film. Um, based on a, on a, a, a fictionalized true event um, of uh, supposed cowardice um, in the World War One uh, trench warfare, um, when um, a, a battalion uh, refused to run forward to capture a hill in the middle of nowhere, uh, no man's land, um, 
because they were just literally getting blown to pieces. Um, and Kubrick shows all this in its I mean, this is a you know fifties film, so you're not even expecting loads and loads of gore, but it's shot very matter of factly, and you can see the these poor sods gump falling over each other as they're getting blown to pieces. It's quite a harrowing film, that part of it. And then you get into the the, the trial aspect of it, um, another very harrowing aspect because it's all based on truth. And if you're expecting a happy ending, like a, uh, a, um, a I think I put in the review, a, a Blackadder last-minute reprieve, you ain't going to get one. It's really quite a sad and distraught and awful film. And that makes it, beautiful an absolute masterpiece of a film um a little bit talky um as the as films were in the 50s um but just kubrick's eye to detail and the way he frames and the way he sets apart the two worlds it's just a spectacular it's a masterpiece and eureka have done the uh, done the picture absolute justice um i say eureka uh the the notes are uh uh, from um, orig original camera negative, but I'm not sure they've done anything themselves to it. Um, but it's a spectacular, spectacular image. You can't afford it in any way. Um, the grain, the 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 Dolby Vision gives a, a wonderful uh, grayscale right through from pitch black to pure white and everything in between. Um, the uh, the soundtrack is it's, it's only a, a mono track. But um, surprisingly bombastic, um, a good amount of layering within that mono track, particularly during the, the battle scenes, um, some good bass on it. It's, uh, it's, it's really, really good. And of course, you've got the Eureka extras as well. Um, worth picking up just because the film is so good. It's so good. Very nice. Ah, uh, yes. Well, what a top 10. And it ends with one which would have beautifully led into our theme of the week, but instead is going to get broken up by running through a uh, coming soon and her uh, Netflix top 10 action movies article. I mean, the number one choice for uh, was The Raid, mm -hmm. US import from mm -hmm. Sony. Uh, Gareth Evans has spent a long time apparently going back to this. Um, it was his his big break doing this movie, but he uh, had some limitations when originally doing the color scheme. Uh, the movie was shot on a prosumer HD Panasonic AGAF 100. Apparently, could barely resolve 1080p. Uh, this resulted in highly compressed 8-bit camera files, which were blown up for the original 2K cinema presentations. So no one expected it to ever look good but the blu-ray is pretty murky lots of people call it yogurts and i can see that <laughs> it's like a moldy yogurt kind of look to some of the backgrounds murky green blue yellow swamp mm -hmm. yogurts i mean yeah no one wants i can to... remember yeah it's it's not it's not a great look for the for the for the for the film even though you forgive it because it was shot for nothing in basically one corridor. Um, but he he wanted to do something for 4K. And boy, he, did he. Yeah, boy, did he. I mean, yeah. he he's somehow gone back to it. You, you know, it's not like a native 4K image in terms of pristine detail. You're never going to get that. But it's a completely revolutionary color scheme. Uh, there's there's no yogurt. It it looks like a real set. Mm -hmm. um, it looks like real walls, the scummy walls, but you can see the detail on them. Uh, it looks like real skin rather than plasticine, and real mm -hmm. beads of sweat. I mean, my God, he's it's incredible. Yeah, it is incredible, and it is the HDR that I think has made all the difference. Yep. Not Dolby Vision HDR, but he's really frame by framed it. Uh, it's utter revisionism, which we will come to later, but um, I can't see anyone ever going back from this. And he's also slapped on not one but two Dolby Atmos tracks, the both the um, both in the original Indonesian, of course. But uh, which you get is choice. incredible. Yeah, it is. I mean, the, oh my God. Uh, whichever you pick, the Atmos is fantastic and furious. The base is oh. 
the the only difference is the score so there was the original indonesian score and then when it hit the states for his, for a us release mike shinoda uh, lincoln park um he he did his own us flavored variation i mean i mean he did I take, ever heard it. take notes from it i think i've only ever listened to it with the um mike shinoda track the us release uh and i listened to it with the original indonesian which was excellent Mm. Uh, I think it's a hard pick, though. I would be tempted out of familiarity to go back next time to watch it with the Shinoda nice. one. Um, but it's a fabulous set. All the old extras on there, you know, Plasticine, The Raid, and 80s anime, The Raid. Uh, it's, a, it's a nice nice set. Steelbook as Steelbook well. Steelbook as well, yeah. Yeah, it's a... I mean, ah, it's also expensive. in my to watch pile. Yeah, <laughs> it is. But it's a... It's a prime con contender in the pros column for um, for revisionism, which mm. we'll come to after Mark tells us about all the 4Ks coming soon. Uh, all right, I'm going to blast through this. So this first yeah. one is for everyone, everyone in the forum who has ever written a post that goes, huh, another 4K release for a film I've never heard of. Well, because of you, You've got this release. Yes, it's the crappy remake of Infernal Affairs, <laughs> The Departed. The one that is the most bland, vanilla, dullest, most inane Scorsese film ever. Give this it an Oscar. You, you know? <laughs> give, give me all the random crap in the world over dreary, dull crap like that. But anyway, The Departed is coming from Warner Brothers uh, in yeah. the States. We don't have a release date, but it'll be probably within the next quarter. And speaking of dull mainstream releases, the likes of Kung Fu Panda, the Oceans Trilogy, and American Pie are also coming. The last one... What's wrong with Kung Fu Panda? Oh, for God's sake, Sam. It's just <laughs> shaking my head at you. Uh, but but bizarrely, American Pie is coming from 88 films. Yeah, I noticed that. Uh, it's just very, very yeah. strange. H however, good luck trying to find someone who's going to pay 30 quid for that. 88 films. Uh, Criterion over in the States uh, have found a new way to annoy uh, 4K fans, uh, which is for their April releases, which include the likes of The Amazing Anatomy of a Fall and Karen Kazama's Ace Girl Fight. They're only coming on 1080p. No 4K for them. Thanks, Criterion. Swines. Uh, however, <laughs> but back to the good stuff. Arrow UK have the good Frank Hen and Lotta film. Basket Case coming on the 29th of April. Uh, while 88 films continue on the other side of the, the flip side of the coin, they do the Lord's work and re-release more of their beloved Italian collection of genre monstrosities, the delightful absurd and the deliciously twee anthropophagus. Oh, June. God. Another uh, video nasty. Isn't it? Another video nasty in yeah. glorious 4K. Can't <laughs> wait. Uh, Incredible. Da David uh, Pitch Black to his spooky submarine thriller below is coming from Kino, as is their want, soon. So, frankly, Christ knows when that's coming. Uh, but that's a great little uh, slightly supernatural wartime maritime drama. That's great. However, they have finally announced Fred Zimmerman's classic High Noon is coming on April the 16th. So that's cool. Severin over in the US have got their hands on a couple of Michel Suave minor horror classics, The Sect and The Church. Got to love some of those. Uh, uh, Dario Argento, I think, was exec producers on, on both of those, and they're just cheesemongous. They're coming on the 30th of April. Over here in the UK, they're with Shameless at the moment, so it'll be interesting to see. Is this the time where Shameless gets on the 4K bandwagon? Mm -hmm. <laughs> interesting. We don't know. Uh, Shout Factory are giving us a couple of toy-based horrors that absolutely no one wanted in the form of 4Ks of Willy's Wonderland and the Child's Play remake. They're coming in March. Vinegar Sin yeah, exactly. That's Nick Vinegar Cage rubbish. <laughs> yeah, I can't Vinegar believe it's getting 4K. That's unbelievable. I mean, it's not terrible, Freddy's, but... I'm telling you. Uh, Vinegar Syndrome announced the Soul Bass Classic uh, Phase 4 for one of their latest superb VSUs. Uh, fingers crossed for a magnet clasp. I'm a sucker for a magnet clasp. And finally, Paramount have announced two anniversary editions of Beloved Teen Classics. Mean Girls, not the musical, the original, is now 20 years young. But even better for those of a slightly older disposition, The Crow is hitting 30 years old this year, and it is coming on a gorgeous new Steelbook set. 
Uh, however, it's paramount. So place your bets as to what level the DNR knob got turned well, up to. Hopefully uh, it'll be good because so, I've still uh, got the uh, Blu-ray upstairs in its wrapper. Well, bin bin that off. Uh, so yeah, that that's what's uh, that's what's coming soon for K fans. Yeah, I love the cry, love the cry. Right, yeah. um, physical media. Right, our theme is remastering versus revisionism, and uh, w w you know we had a bunch of questions um, that we put to the audience, and uh, you know a lot of titles we had in mind when looking at this, including the raid. Everything from like Heat and the Creator, Terminator Two, James James Cameron's going to get mentioned a lot on this. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the Matrix, you know, what do we what do we count as revisionism? What do we think a good remaster is? Uh, uh, let's go to our questions that we polled out and ask them inside and out. Um, once any damage has been repaired, what is more important to you when watching a remastered or restored movie? And the options are that it looks like it did when it was originally released, or that the image quality is improved. What do we say, Mark? I I am a purist. I want the film to look as it was originally done. That's what it should be. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it, it is a... All art is taken from a place and a time, and it is informed by the place and the time. And I think film, more than almost any other medium, is heavily influenced by the technology of the time. Everything from the cameras to the film to the special effects, you know, you name it, technology plays a hugely important place in it. But I think film connects with people, you know, emotionally based on the time they watch it and all that kind of stuff. And so I think for me, a film needs to be what it was. That is the whole point. I want to see a film as it was now that opens up all manner of words. it really does doesn't it, it really all does. manner so i am i am perfectly <laughs> open to the fact that, that it's not quite as crystal clear as it may seem however fundamentally all of these new blu-ray releases and look at the the the, the top 10 that we've just had there the vast majority are older films that are being re-released what i would want to see from them the raid is an interesting one, but nine times out of ten, I want to see it restored to what it was. That's okay. it for me, both audio and video. Well, it's easier with I, audio, isn't yeah. it? I mean, it's harder with video, even though really, if you asked fans, they'd want like the whatever the Star Wars restoration numbers are, the seventy-seven and the, yeah, four K seventy-seven. Yeah, so so in, in an ideal world. They could have those and and whatever 4K officially goes out in the same package mm -hmm. in the same way that people get options over soundtrack. But it's easier to do the soundtrack. So you can have the original audio and you can have a remixed Atmos. There's, there's, there's more room to give people that option on audio than it is in picture. True, but then I'd argue that the audio one is the one that is most egregiously missing on on the majority of releases uh you know so take duel for example even spielberg's duel that got a, a 4k release last year huge amount of restoration work put into the picture looked amazing retained all the grain a nice subtle hdr you'd argue that the picture was nicely authentic it then got slapped with a monstrous new dolby atmos track which sounded great but it was a new track and no original audio. Now, why? You know exactly. And, yes. and this, I think, I yeah. think, I think a lot of fans, rightly now, when it comes to this, are bemoaning the fact that give me a new Atmos track. So look at what Second Sight did with uh, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It stuck a bloody Atmos track on from a mono source. I mean, look, you you only have to think about the digital shit went into that, but. Before everyone collectively looks their shit, Second Sight said, hang on a minute, look, you've got the G mono audio on there as well. Absolutely fine. Mm -hmm. So I, I think you're absolutely right, Kaz. You know, the choice, and it should be the choice with the audio tracks. You can't get a choice with the picture. You know, you don't, yeah. <laughs> that's slightly trickier. But for me, what we should be seeing now is we should be getting OG audio on everything. And if there's nothing else available, I'd rather it be an OG audio as opposed to 
the dual Atmos track only. That coming from my purist point of view, and and like you said, the audio tracks are smelly for small in in size. They don't take a huge amount on the disc. I don't understand unless there are rights issues or there are problems with it. But then these should be told to fans when they're released, you know, because that to me is 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 galling when it comes to these these beautiful i can see that i can see that it's it's annoying even more that it's so easy to fix in a way yeah. easier yeah. to fix than on the video totally. you know where do you stand on it side do you are, are you are you gonna go with looks like it was i mean it's it seems like an easy question we should be answering looks like it did when originally released but i mean twitter says 75 percent of people and twitter and youtube 75 percent of people want blanket quality improved quality improved yeah like at three quarters of people almost three quarters two thirds, i think three it's quarters, because they want people quality improved over original looks like it was when originally um, and that's that's interesting because um when you think back to how a film is supposed to look um and it depends from the era when it was filmed yeah you mentioned uh the Star Wars um, 4K 8, uh, 4K 77. Now that uh, is a, is a great pick because if you see the uh, original scan that they did, that's so they they produced two: a DNR version and a uh, uh, the, the standard um, straight scan disc out. That's not a disc. Um, the first one I got was uh, the DNR version, and I thought, "Oh, this is brilliant! This, this not all. It's all slightly different. It's not all monochromatic like the like the Disney version is all sanitized. It's all dark and it's all bright and it's everything's fixed on it. And to see the 4K uh, 77 DNR version, you think this is brilliant. But then you see the original, the the the, the larger file version, the un DNR version, as they call it." That is even better because it is really grubby. It's properly uh, grainy. Okay. Now, films used to have grain, of course. That's in the film stock. Depending on the film stock you use, of course, there are some that can be extremely light. There are some that can be extremely heavy. Lighting plays a part in it as well. And I loved the uh, how it was supposed to be. Now, I, now I saw, uh, I was what? eight or nine when I first saw it. Now, I cannot remember what it looked like <laughs> when I was eight or nine, right? I can't because my mind's not that good. I can't remember what it was like last week, let alone 40 years ago. Um, but I do know that it was, uh, you know, uh, shot cheaply because it was a cheap sci-fi film. So it was going to have film grain, yeah? Now, if you see the new versions, they are sanitized. They are, they're not wiped clean and they're not overly enhanced but they are sanitized if you put the two next to each other you can see which looks best to my eyes the one with all the the, the grain how it supposed to be hmm. so that is why i always go how it was supposed to be now like mark that is it's it's a, a difficult question to answer because if you think about uh jason and the argonauts when that came out on uh is it jason it might it might have been one of the one of the simbads the ones with the harpies and they removed the digitally removed the strings on the harpies when they were attacking patron oh. i can't remember the film yeah uh, and there was I, a big I, I, yeah which one was it i could you know i could, I, I swore it was jason the argonauts but it got me thinking it could, it it could be jason that. i don't know now but anyway, whichever, anyway, whichever hey, one it is, one, one, of, one of the Harryhausen films, okay, come out on yeah. Blu-ray, cleaned up nicely, still grainy, still good colouring, fantastic detail, but they had removed the, uh, the, 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 the errors, if you like, stuff that wasn't supposed to be there originally, but they didn't have the technology to remove it. And that was a big question at the time. Oh, my God, they've, moved, they've ruined the film because they've removed these lines. Yeah? Mm, yeah. I was perfectly happy with that perfectly happy with that yeah yeah and this this comes back to the raid doesn't it which as kaz said you know edwards went back and he admitted that there were limitations at at source which he now has the ability to correct 
the tough, okay. it's a tough call though isn't it because they say well, that they say that a director never finishes a film it's yeah, always taken off true. him that's yeah. the that's the funny that's line the isn't it? Quite, so, so yeah. you give you give these films to um to directors who like like tinkering like like michael mann or, and, or and lucas yeah he yeah. i'm sure there's 50 different versions he come up with and uh, you know like or like cameron he's spent ages and he's done his own he's gone this is the way i want it to look i mean our our question was our next question was is it okay to get for a film to be given new color grading if the director or cinematographer are involved and almost unanimous yes on both twitter and youtube you know like 80 90 percent were like yeah yeah i mean it Basically, it's okay as long as the director's involved. But you know, that's a that's a whole can of worms, isn't it? I, I, I mean, I'm am ju- just going to say William Friedkin, French yeah. connection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah that, exactly. That's all. That's, that's all I'm going to say. You know, so for the, for those that didn't pick up that monstrosity of a Blu-ray, Friedkin just basically tipped a can of blue paint over the yeah, entire. I want it blue. Over I want the blue. entire French connection. Yeah. C- quite rightly, physical media collectors lost their shit and he completely about faced now whether or not he about faced or whether or not 20 oh, oh he's gone he completely lost mark he was friedrich's uh... but not he's he's the ghost of friedrich has come round and cut him off because he didn't like what he was saying about his blue <laughs> <laughs> well i think i mean i i think that that's i think that when it comes to stuff like this it is a tough call letting the uh letting the director have complete free reign but equally it's hard to ah mid sentence heads with it yeah oh he's oh. back but in, has he got sound no he's got no most... oh yeah he does yeah because <laughs> sorry, sorry. I, I think i think my daughter's just exploded fortnight should have... off the internet what would have been good is if you came back blue like with a blue <laughs> filter should, should, yeah. should, should, should yes apologies for that yes did, did you finish that conversation or no not really it was the same it's the same question on directors yeah. photography is it okay for them to use ai oh. tools everyone's saying it's okay for them to use ai tools no. the director signs off on it it's it's interesting because you know that it, these are big cans of worms james cameron is sitting there going told you you know no 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 no, no. Yeah, but this is these are pretty heavily weighted polls. I mean, there's there's hundreds of people who've chipped up and who said, "Yep, it's okay. Director can do what he likes. Yeah, it's okay. He can use AI." Well, okay, yeah. then then still provide know, the original. Uh, yeah, but that's a whole oh. lot who are isn't Why it? not? They've got it. They've got it because they're doing the work on it. They yeah, it's already know. there. I know they can't. Ah, 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 but. But, 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 now let, let's get into this now. The, one of the big issues around this revisionism is the colour grading. So oh, the yes. introduction of HDR, you know, we're now seeing brand new colour grades being slapped on old films. So the first mm. thing everyone said was, well, well, they didn't have HDR back in the 60s, so it's all revision. Well, well, hang on, hang on. HDR now allows us to better capture, you know, from the source. So it's not quite that simple. I'm sure there is some light cannon blasting going on here but of course the other issue is when people talk, and I, I i didn't realize this when people talk about the original camera negative the original camera negative it's not in color is it the camera negative is not color all the color stuff is put in afterwards photochemically all right now who is to say when they go back to the original camera negative what, what's what's their color what are they used as their color reference is there is there a print that has been kept magically pristine since day one that has not had any light on it? What are they using? Now, what's interesting about this is everyone always says, every YouTube channel, and I'm guilty of it in my reviews as well, we look at what's gone before. Oh, it's a different colour grade to the last Blu-ray. Well, who's to say the last Blu-ray was right? Well, we had, I, I said when... very much that when um, with Cutthroat Island. I said exactly that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like because everyone said, "Hang on a minute, it's, it's gold, it's gold." I said, "Well, yeah, but that's because the other one was blue." <laughs> but, but and, and the, the question is, is, which is right? Which yeah. is the right one? Because it might be that there's, they're just two different types of revisionism. Because no one really knows. I mean, the the thing for me is, you know, uh, blood and black lace, uh, a superb restoration that we said last year was the best restoration uh, of, of an old film, and everyone praises the the beautiful colours. 
I, I, I don't know what the original colours look like. For all we know, <laughs> if, I, if I was an audience in Italy in 1964 watching that, I guarantee you my first experience would have been a battered, faded print where the colours looked all kinds of wonky. And I'd be the first one now going, oh, colours don't look right. Oh, colours don't. So I think all of this, we've just got to be really careful that what is our point of reference. And for a lot of these things, it is coming down to preference there's no objective about some of this especially not when it comes to colors i think i think mm. that the the dnr bit is a slightly different issue and tinkering and we'll come on to cameron in a little bit i think that's something else but color grading is the one thing that i think is we can all compare well that was blue you know some of the, the films that we've talked about here though i think go beyond that so studio canal for example they've got form with some of their releases mm-hmm. like cat's eye and red sonia and even their King Kong 76 to a point, the, it, like the entire color scheme has been given uh, a sort of sickly yellow or a sickly green push to it. Now you can compare that to previous Blu-rays or you don't even have to. There's something there that just, because it, it just doesn't, it doesn't look, look right. It doesn't, yeah. right. It just yeah. doesn't, skin tones look sickly, yeah. like people are drawn this. Something's, you know, and that is where a color grade is introduced by the restoration, I think. I mean, that's just got to stop. We've got to stop that, you, you know. Which is interesting a... because 4K has fixed that in a lot of other areas. So you get the raid yeah. where arguably it's fixed a lot of damage or you get the matrix mm. where where we go from having years. I mean, thinking back, I wonder whether I, I, I don't even know whether I can remember watching the matrix without a green wash mm. yeah. because I didn't see it in mm. the cinema. So I might have always watched it with a complete green wash and then watching it on 4K where it's not a complete green wash, where it's like spot green. It looks. I remember on DVD because I had it and watched it a million times on DVD. And it wasn't green green on the DVD. Yeah, but I can't. I mean, I had it on DVD, but I cannot remember. I cannot remember it not ever having this. It was was steely gray blue. It wasn't green. Okay. Well, I mean, whatever it is, it's m- more 4K like the 4K. Has, yeah, four K has done has done a job of sort of returning it back. As so, did uh, uh, Fellowship of the Rings, actually. Yeah, uh, yeah. What the four K? The four K, yeah. yeah, improved, yeah, yeah, yeah. put the color back to what the, it was the after snow, the blurry. Yeah, snow looked white. Didn't snow look white instead of, uh, <laughs> yeah, instead of yeah, blue? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, 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 so. I think this and this is leading us into the Cameron discussion, though. I think mm-hmm. colour is one thing. I think probably the biggest tinkering issue that studios like to do is getting rid of that grain. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, sl- use of digital technology to get rid of film grain that was once an inherent part of the image. Uh, and I think up till now, we've lived in a world where scrubbing the grain has all manner of nasty picture side effects impacts. Yeah. it scrubs the detail away mm-hmm. uh and it it leaves the images looking waxy is the term i believe you know and kaz you threw up terminator 2 judgment day that is the poster boy for getting rid of film grain it, was, it is uh predator it, actually the early predator the original and, well, one the, yeah. the, uh, the early predator i think is more clear cut but you could argue that predator and terminator 2 and now titanic show a kind of a pattern and it's mm. a pattern that's later going to be seen when next month and the month after we look at the rest of the Cameron releases because people are starting to go well uh, obviously predator is terrible it's all waxy People get starting to go, now Terminator 2, I'm really annoyed that it looks this clean and they've robbed it of detail. But you know what? I'm not going back to the Blu-ray. Some people, some people are like, I'm never going to watch this 4K again. But some people are like, actually, I I like the rest of what they've done with it. I'm going to live with it. And then you get to Titanic and people are going, yeah, he's massively changed this in every way imaginable, but I'm never, ever going back to Blu-ray. It looks spectacular. What happens when the rest of them come out? Are we starting to see... Uh, the technology get to a stage where we're okay with the same manner of tinkering that has been apparent. Mm. And it's just a trajectory. The only reason Terminator 2, well, you could argue it's come from the 3D, but his intentions are the same. It's possible yeah. that in 2024, James Cameron remastering Terminator 2 wouldn't come out with lovely grain. It would come out looking like Titanic or looking like the, the digital 4K we've seen of mm. True Lies and the Abyss. It would come out looking super clean with lots of detail under it. Probably not a whole lot, lot, lot 
less like what it currently does, but it certainly wouldn't come out looking the way people remember it in the 90s in the mm-hmm. cinema. And would people suddenly go, well, I quite like this new look. And no. Nah. Well, well, I think the Cameron ones, though, it, it, it's the three films that are coming out, plus Titanic, I'd argue, they have such different aesthetics that it isn't as clear cut. Right. So Titanic uh, is is obviously a, a fairly new film. Let's be honest, even though it's 20 odd. God, how many, how many years old it is now? Uh, and, it, and, it, and it did. It, it looks it looks great, but it, it, it it's very obvious that it's a manipulated image. Now, I think you look at the three that are coming, the three biggies. Now, I think everyone looks at the abyss and we've only seen the digital version. We haven't seen the disc yet, but we know it's going to be like that. But only a touch better. The the we, we've had no HD release of the Abyss. We haven't. No, no we haven't. We've got nothing, yeah. nothing to compare it against. There's mm. no point in thinking about what does Grain look like on that crappy non-anamorphic DVD or anything like that. Uh, uh, but of course, the, the thing with the Abyss is it's a blue film. It's shot in the water. It's all blue. <laughs> so it's 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 steely blue. It's sharp because you know those clean military lines. You'd argue that the new aesthetic suits the film. We haven't really, I don't, you know, most people probably haven't watched a bloody film in 20 years because they didn't want to watch that DVD. Mm. But then you compare it to Aliens, a film which has had a great Blu-ray release, which is yeah. lovely and watched countless times. The thing with Aliens is inherently it is a grungy looking film, both with the film stock used, fast film stock, low light levels, lots of smoke. So the grain is thick and chewy. And that has been apparent. Every time we watch, it. yeah, all the time. Now, now I haven't seen the iTunes version of, of Aliens yet. I'm a bit scared to, but from what I can tell, the grain has gone, and that to me changes the character of the film mm. more so than uh, the Abyss did, more so than Titanic did. I'd probably argue even more so than T2 did, and I think Aliens is going to be the one that's going to be- because to me that grain that grunginess, that aesthetic was part of the film. Now, Cameron can turn around and say all he wants, which was, well, I didn't want grain back in 1986. It's like, well, do you know what? Tough shit, Jim. <laughs> 40 years, we've all loved that grain, right? Yeah, it's, so it's, we want to see the I grain. Know, but it's it's like these, like I say, with the, with the 90% of people are like, the director can do what he likes, yeah. he can use AI, and we just want it to look better. We don't want it to look the way it looked. I mean, yeah. I, I, I agree with you. I just, uh, I wonder whether this is, this is a, this is this, you know, a shifting tide and, and it comes to Atmos. We, we talked about having both options, yeah. but the, the Twitter and YouTube response was like over two thirds, just interested yeah. in Atmos on, yeah. you know, both on both poles. Um, yeah. I mean, it's, uh, uh, it's it's difficult to see how it goes. And the last two polls really quickly, because we're, we're running out of time, um, extra features, nobody seems to particularly care about them. Nice to have, sure. I dip in, almost nobody watches all of them. And a- absolutely it nobody does. gives a damn about the extra packaging. It's Tom like, does. Yeah, Tom it's does, yeah. like 80%. Think it's unnecessary. I mean, my God, art cards, steel book, gimme, 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 gimme. I I agree. If I was to fill out one of these polls myself, I'd say I don't care about it, and then I'd go straight out and order the seven. What's in the box? Cut. I know what's in the box, Savvy. <laughs> what's in the box is a bunch of art cards and a poster. I'm never going to unfold, let alone put up. I know what's in the box. So, um, so yeah, it's, I I would say I don't care about them, but I love. Love my stupid sets, um, but it's interesting that, that the polls go like this because I do favor Atmos tracks even for older films, and, and, I, and I, yeah, and, and and I I will at times, but just like you say, give us both. What what's the harm in giving us both? Yeah. The rate did, yeah, blistering Atmos track, and you've still got the original. I mm. I, 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 cursory I glance out of all of the films that are on here. Out of uh, I, I listed Heat, Creator, Terminator Two, A Red Sonja, Blood and Black Lace, Duel, Raid, Titanic, and Matrix. Uh, the only one of these that I will not watch on 4K as my preferred option is Heat. 
and uh in as one of my top three movies of all time it surely comes into play because i've seen it so many times it just frustrates me mm. but really on all the others it's just not i'm never gonna watch terminator 2 on the blu-ray i'm perfectly yeah. perfectly okay with having complained about it and then grown to live with it you know so, done yeah, a thing, I, I don't fine. even own it because yeah. i never wanted to own it i still use the uh the optimum release it's original optimum release. And, and, and i get that but i've seen it now in 4k and i'm i'm just not i'm yeah. not he's he's gone for a certain style like mark said it's something that maybe doesn't work with aliens because aliens is a lot more gritty but strangely this mm. um, this the particular use of technology the t1000 in particular is a very clean look it's not it's not supposed to be grainy or gritty the t1000 i'm not saying yeah, yeah. that the film wasn't so it almost works as a theory even though the end result doesn't benefit from 2024's um ai, <laughs> AI skills. skills yeah it doesn't <laughs> Sorry. No, I, I mean, I mean, to, to, to bring this home, Kaz, I think I think you're absolutely right. I think that the poll surprised me, really surprised me, uh, and I, and I think of all the films on your list, the Creator 4K, I think highlights exactly that. It is that manifest. So this is a brand. This is a brand new film shot digitally, where the director has gone in and tried to introduce a film like aesthetic, and everyone's gone. Oh, it looks horrible. Oh, don't like it. What way? It's not 4K. Oh, but I'll catch on yeah. Disney Plus. So you know, talk about you, you're damned if yeah. you do, you're damned if you don't. Mm -hmm. But 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 I I think ultimately now, you know, the the boutiques aren't quite there yet. They are improving. Uh, I I I think there's always going to be the odd little issue, be bloody Conan, you know, and all this kind of crap. But they are learning. I think the boutiques. I think the main Hollywood studios are still very very hit and miss. We have to talk about Paramount, you know, and it's, yeah. you know, who knows what we're going to get with Paramount. Universal do Jewel. They did a American Graffiti last year, which was an absolute horror show. So I think the major Hollywood studios though aren't playing the same game as the boutiques. But where does all this lead? I think the Cameron releases are going to change. I hate to say it. Yeah. I think they're going to be very influential in yeah. terms of, you know, restorations going forward. Maybe not of some of these obscure 60s Italian films, but I think certainly of more mainstream films going forward. I think the, the reaction to that, to those releases in March, I think are going to be. I think they're going to be really significant for the whole restoration sort of landscape. So it'd be interesting to see how they land and what they look like and what everyone's reaction is to. Maybe we'll get James Cameron 4K re-releases of everybody else's movies. Cool. Like super AI cleaned up. The AI cut. Oh, and can you imagine of, of people AI. <laughs> <laughs> any, any of the films in that list, can you imagine what they look like? Oh, yeah. just be... Grotesque. Yes. Yes. I. I mean. Yeah. It's. It's. It's tough to see where it will be, but it's going to be all. All we've got for True Lies and the Abyss, and yeah. and I'm. I'm looking forward to to both. Yep. Um. Even though after twenty years of waiting for it to come out in HD, all people can now talk about is how shocked they are with how it's going to look when it finally <laughs> lands. <laughs> And don't forget, don't forget, oh, don't like the front cover. Yeah, also, <laughs> also, that artwork, I mean, come on. Um, Too right, many floating quick, heads. Quick shout out to Netflix Action Article. We're starting to do all these articles, uh, part of our evergreen mission uh, to counter global warming with a series of articles that can be refreshed as new releases come out and uh replace the ones that are in that list or reorder the ones that are in the list we started with netflix action which is thin on the ground but we did our best with it it'll get updated when when new titles get added we're going to be doing netflix horror and plenty of other netflix themes and going through all of the streaming services with this netflix um, animated that'd be a good one Netflix animated yeah it's difficult to know how to split that up whether to do TV shows separate from movies but you know and Netflix sci-fi is pretty good and uh, we'll see how their horror shapes up but anyway we're going to do do it for all the streaming services pull them together and have master lists and and people will forever be able to look at lists where they can find the best content to watch without having to listen to us talk about it for now um 
do let us know if there's anything we haven't covered that you think we should check out that is it my thanks to the movies team if you enjoyed the podcast please give us a like and subscribe to the channel hit the notification bell so you don't miss out when we publish live streams product reviews and more if you really like the podcast buy us a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash av forums you can follow us on twitter and facebook and bookmark av forums.com for the latest reviews news and videos plus why not leave, leave us a five-star rating on whichever service you use if they allow it but only if you enjoyed the show thank you for watching and listening and join us for another podcast real soon see you all bye. soon bye